So if you've been searching for a good fry pan for use while out in the woods, I may have something that you'd be interested in. This is the 8-inch skillet or fry pan from Fire Maple. If you're interested in hearing more about this, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending me their skillet or fry pan, whatever you want to call it, so that I could share it with you. So I've had this for some time, and as you can see, I have been using it over a fire, and I'll talk more of my experiences with it in a moment. So what I'd like to do is just close in on the fry pan a little bit so I can talk about its specifications and key features, and then we'll talk about my experiences with it. All right, so I put it back in the stuff sack that I carried it in. The first thing I want to say is this fry pan did come with a stuff sack from Fire Maple. However, I chose to sub it out for this so that I could put a few other things inside with it as well. The one that came with it didn't fit in such a way that allowed me to add extra things inside of it. So that's the only reason I'm using this stuff sack. So let me show you what else I have in here. So quite often I'll, I'll pack a number of things with the fry pan, uh, but today I just wanted to show you the basic configuration configuration. So what makes this unique in this configuration is that I have included a pie plate. This is a five or excuse me a nine inch anodized aluminum pie plate from Fat Daddios. I can put a link to it on eBay. I purchased mine in a thrift store so I didn't have to pay the price for it. They're not the, all that expensive but the reason I chose to put the two of these together is one it fits in perfectly, allows me to lock the pan in place with the folding handle. It not only gives me an eating plate, but I use it inverted like this as a lid on top of the fry pan, and it is just the right size. In fact, I think when I had previewed the pan, I thought it would be nice to have a lid that came with the fry pan, maybe made of stainless steel, that would sit on top. Now I'm thinking, I prefer this. I prefer this for a couple of reasons. One, I don't have to carry a plate in addition. And two, look at the height it gives me for baking, which is exactly what I did do. And I baked a meal inside of this combination. And I'll put a link to that at the end of this video if you're interested. So if you end up purchasing a pan like this, I'd recommend looking for a pie plate like this to put together. All right, let's go back to the pan itself. I'll give you a few specifications for it and we'll talk about its key features. So it is made of stainless steel. It is 304 stainless steel. It comes in at 15.1 ounces, which is 470 grams. It is inside diameter of eight inches, which is 20.3 centimeters. And it does have a height of two inches, 2.12 inches, which is 5.2 four centimeters. I gave the inside diameter because sometimes that's what people want to know is what is this diameter, especially if they're going to be trying to look for a lid for it. So add another couple millimeters for the roll rim on it if you're interested. All right, as far as key features go, some of the simpler things is the fact that it does have a locking handle on it. So as you collapse it, open it up, and now there's a sliding uh, latch right here. When you slide it down, then it locks into place so it's not going to collapse on you. Very nice feature indeed. Also, I mentioned this in the other preview video, I really like the shape of this fry pan in that it has rounded bottoms in it. Some fry pans have come to a quite a, a, an abrupt uh, corner in the bottom there. Having this rounded bottom means it's so easy to clean out, and if you've had anything burn in your fry pan, you know exactly what I'm talking about when you try to clean it out. And I'll talk about items burning or not burning or how to prevent them from burning in a few moments time. So nice feature. I like the height of this pan in relation to its diameter, which means that yes, you can fry eggs in it. You can do your steaks. You can do whatever else you normally fry, bacon, of course, but you can also do some things like maybe some soups or anything that has a sauce in it as well. Now, the other nice thing, if you are doing things like a sauce, is that there is a formed spout on this side, making it easy to pour from this without, uh, oh, so that you can direct the flow into whatever it is that you're pouring it into. So those are a couple of the key features, but probably what makes this stand apart from a lot of stainless steel fry pans that you use in the woods is the bottom. 
This has a welded bottom on it. And as far as a welded bottom, it is what they call a tri-ply construction of aluminum welded to the bottom of this in three layers. And the benefit of this is it allows for rapid heat absorption into the pan and distribution, distribution across the bottom. Now the real benefit there is that you're less likely to scorch or burn anything in your fry pan. It will retain some of the heat, not like a cast iron pan, better than a lot of pans will, but more importantly, it will allow the heat to distribute across the bottom because of course that's one of the complaints many people have about stainless steel fry pans and titanium and other pans for that matter, is that foods often stick and get burnt onto the bottom. So that will go a long way to preventing that from happening by allowing the heat to uh, transfer across the bottom. Now, honestly, when things are burning or sticking to your pan, there's a few reasons for that. One is quite often you're using it on a small flame, like something like a gas canister stove, which concentrates into the center. And stainless steel is not great at distributing heat. Titanium is worse, but even stainless steel can get a hot spot in the center. I haven't experienced that using this over a fire at all or a larger wood stove. No uh, central hot spot, no spot on the bottom inside of this pan is any hotter than any of the other uh, spots on the inside of this pan. More importantly though, and I'll, I'll make a video on this separately, is the technique you use for uh, frying things in the pan. And quite often that's the, the, the issue that most people run into. It's not like cooking at home when you're cooking over an open fire or even a small gas canister stove. You have to use a different technique than you would in your kitchen to ensure things don't stick. And as I mentioned, I'll make a video specifically on that topic. All right, as I mentioned, just a very simple fry pan. I have been able to cook eggs in this without having them stick. I have fried up bacon. I have, uh, I'm trying to think what else I did. Oh yeah, I baked in this. I baked a full meal in this as well. So it does withstand the heat of being directly over a fire without any damage to that welded bottom whatsoever. Really quite nice in that respect. I read a few closing comments on the eight inch skillet from Fire Maple, Antarctic line of bushcraft pots and pans. To me, this is a near perfect fry pan or skillet for use out in the woods over a fire for all the reasons that I already mentioned. It's actually become my go-to one at this point. Uh, I have not tried to put a seasoning in the bottom of this. You can do that with stainless steel. It just doesn't last so I don't consider it all that worth it. Technique is more important than having seasoning in a pan like this. Now there is one thing that I want to respond to. One of my viewers, and I'll put his name on the screen, asked if this would work in the Trangia 24 five cook system and I just happen to have one and uh, yes and no is the answer sorry about that yes and no it is of the right diameter to work in there the problem is the rounded bottom right here so the Trangia wants to accept anything with a more of an angle or at least a slight angle on it in its three points of contact that you would support the pan in so this will set in but unfortunately what happens it wants to roll to one side or the other because of that rounded bottom so I, I can't recommend it for that use. But for everything else that I've mentioned it's used for, it's ideal, it really is. So, okay, if you have any questions or any comments on this pan or anything else in the Fire Maple Antarctic line of products, please put them in the comment section below. I will provide the links and all the information I provided you about this pan in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.